What's up, people? Good to see you if you guys... If you guys can hear me, let me guys know. I think my internet is not that great at this point. All right, good to see you guys. Welcome Saturday night and the last day of the boot camp. But it is not the end. Um, the show is going to go on and on and on. So hello, hello, hello. The usual suspects. Arnav is there. Broken Lukador, Genu Games, Red Demolisher, Tarun Sharma. Um, Ayush, Rohit, Naveen, Kishan, good to see you guys. Um, it has been a crazy day. I have, I was like, I was expecting, uh, from the game design challenge from last night, I was expecting, you know, maybe four, five, six people to submit some documents, but I was really taken by surprise. Like, I was really blown away by the fact that they were, there were dozens. There were dozens, and I think there are some that just came in right now. And I was, you know, people use the word humbled. I was genuinely humbled by what I saw, right? You guys really put up amazing effort. I saw the passion in you guys. And I used to be a little bit despondent about the lack of, game designers and game design talent but now at this point you guys i'm so happy because you guys have really impressed me with what you have sent me the standard was really good there were some documents that i saw and i was like wow this is this is amazing like you know i want this person in my course i want this person in my company you know there were some really good guys like i could see the raw talent there were of course some uh, a few mistakes here and there but i could see the raw talent of you guys in your documents you can tell a good game designer by spending 30 seconds looking at a document guys i'll be honest with you and the general standard was really, really good. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about that um, to in the end. How many guys reviewed them? Wow, how many guys submitted the document? That's crazy. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, 25. Like 25, yeah, 25 people, uh, 25 people like submitted uh the the document it was it was crazy you know i was i was very 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 blown away uh to be honest with you guys okay um so yeah that was uh that was kind of crazy so yeah um so what i am going to be doing now is that i'm going to be starting off very very soon so let's do this let's go so just to give you an idea of the um of today's agenda. One second. I, okay. One second. Uh, yes, there it is. I'm sharing my screen now. Let me know. All right. Let's maximize this bad boy. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Awesome. All right. So welcome to day three of Game Design Bootcamp. Let's talk about today's agenda. Today's agenda is going to be how to 
be a world class game designer how to be a serious game designer how to rock it in the world of video games that is what i'm going to be talking about today just give me a second guys i need to sort out my um sort out my windows a little bit okay all right so first of all we're going to get into how you can create game design documentation game design documentation is everything for a game designer you know i've talked about it for the last couple of days and there is a lot of confusion there are a lot of people who don't understand how to write game design documents and this is something you have to excel so we're going to be doing a deep dive into game design documentation i'm also going to be talking about how you guys can specialize in particular game design roles and how you can get a high starting salary straight off the bat okay next there's going to be a guest appearance from a top game industry recruiter joseph kenz who is a friend of mine is going to be giving a talk it's going to be a recorded talk it's not going to be live because he's actually vacationing in bali right now so he was nice enough to give me a video and uh, make a video and send it to me then i'm going to be talking about the details of the game to make a game design program and then of course we're going to have a presentation in which i'm going to be going through the uh, going through the documents all right um so the winners announcement is going to be today and there's going to be a after party guys okay after this is over <clears throat> i'm going to go uh just you know have a cup of tea grab a cup of coffee and i'm going to be back on the discord server so make sure that you guys are on the discord server so the link to the discord server is in the description of the video so everyone who's here i know a lot of you are already on the discord server but make sure that you join the discord server right now the link is in the description of this video go and do it right now also if there are any issues with like uh with with internet or something like that you'll know what's going on um okay touch wood should not be a problem okay all right guys next let's get into it Okay, so once again, uh, I got to do this for the people who are new. Who is Rahul Segal? I am the founder of Roach Interactive Private Limited. I am the founder of GameToMaker.com. Next, I've been teaching game design production for twelve years at Backstage Pass, VIT Bhopal, and also Srishti. Some of you guys I know are from VIT Bhopal, so let me hear. Let me know who's from VIT Bhopal and which colleges you guys are from. I'm interested. If you guys have gone to any colleges. Uh, if you could doing your btech or education let me know i'm really interested in knowing which colleges you guys are in what courses you're doing what your educational background is right do let me know um and right now i'm working at entain i have a day job i've worked at parana games i worked at game loft i've worked for hitwick at several companies and till now the revenue from the games i have made is 75 million dollars plus i kind of stopped counting at 75 million dollars because what's the point right okay so Also I didn't talk about this yesterday but what games do I play is so a little bit about me I am as you can tell I am a I am a Halo buff I really 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 like Halo I am I'm playing Halo Infinite right now almost complete next Max Payne Max Payne is one of my favorite franchises uh of all time i love the story i love the characterization i love the overall mood of the game i'm a big fan of max spain i also play overwatch i used to play a lot at one point i was even thinking like i would you know play competitively but i just don't get the time to um to actually play but i love playing overwatch and you know what who knows maybe one of these days you can find me uh on a server Okay, and next up I play poker because I actually work in the casino game industry. I love to play poker. I love skill games and there is no higher um the higher that there is no higher skill game than poker. It's absolutely amazing, right? So this is a little bit about the games I play. And of course, I'm my I have my own little game studio in which I hand pick my students 
uh, my best students from Gamerdom, etc. And from my colleges that I've taught. And we guys are making a game. We're making a game called Mayu. It's a pixel art role-playing game set in ancient India. You guys are most welcome to go in the, the video description and check out the trailer. And you'll also find the trailer has a link to the Steam page. So please go ahead and wishlist this and do watch till if you're interested. All right. Now, let's get into the meat of the evening. Are you guys ready? So let's see. Um, people are from engineering colleges. Uh, Matusri, GC Dharampur, Bharti Vidya Peet, uh, NID Bangalore. Oh, wow. Awesome. Your interview is day after tomorrow. All the best, right? VIT squad. Awesome. Uh, Romo, VIT Bhopal. Good to see you. Um, a few people, you people like poker. All right. Okay. Let's talk about how you can be a world-class game designer. Now, what I'm going to do now is I am... Um, okay. So I'm going to actually share a world-class game designers portfolio guys i'm going to be like okay um this is going to be a little bit intimidating but i'm going to start off by setting the bar really high and you know there is a, a game there are several game designers who um i look up to myself and i'm going to be sharing uh, i'm going to be sharing um one of those portfolios with you right now so let's do this All right, so what you are seeing here right now, let me zoom this in a little bit, okay? So what you're seeing here right now is uh, you're looking at the portfolio of a world-class game designer. His name is David Shaver, and he is actually one of the designers on Uncharted, The Last of Us, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is his homepage. Um, he says, hello, I'm a game designer with 15 years of professional game industry experience. I'm currently a senior level designer at Blizzard Entertainment, working on a new IP, etc., etc. What do I do? So um, do look this up, guys, right, if you want. This is what a world-class game designer's uh, portfolio looks like. So there is a little bit of an introduction about himself. Uh, and of course, here are uh, his, his, so these are his highlights. Obviously, these are the most famous games that he's worked on. He's worked on Last of Us. He's worked on Level Designer, Uncharted, Titanfall. This is absolutely insane off the hook uh, portfolio, right? Um, so these are his personal projects. So I want to give you an example of what, uh, a good portfolio. So these are his personal projects, um, older pers older professional projects. So as you can see, what he's done, he's actually highlighted his best work. Like I would say, un The Last of Us is an amazing, amazing game. And that's what he's highlighted. So immediately, it's grab your attention. Next, Uncharted. He's made uh, levels for Uncharted. And right now, if you go, uh, these are his personal projects that I want to show you. It's very interesting. So look at this one, which is called Lost Words. Now, um, he has put some lovely screenshots over here, right, that you can look at, look at because this is a speciality. This is what he does. He does level design, right? And now he's put some screenshots, and he's got a very, very good explanation of what he's done. Platform, Windows PC, uh, Engine, Unreal Development Kit. Languages, Kismat, Unreal Script, Tool Used, uh, Duration, 9 Months, Completion, 2013, Team Size 1. That means he was the only level designer. Um, so Project Design Goals, uh, Design and Analysis Document. Very, very cool. He even has a dev blog that he maintained. You can actually click on it and you can actually see his dev, uh, uh, dev blog. And he has a, a demo reel here. You can actually click on the demo reel. And this is um, also absolutely awesome. I've not put the sound on, but you can go and see it if you like. Now, he has given detailed info. And look at this over here. He actually has 
kind of like a, a, a diagram, a level design diagram of how this is like a kind of a key uh, for the level that he has created. Um, game and level, game and level design. That's what he's done. He he, you know, he did the game as well. Level design features that he has designed. He he used scripting in Unreal Script. Uh, player input, isometric camera, player inventory, draggable blocks. He's described everything. He's described what he did with visual scripting, uh, a combat, a combat un- encounter uh, example, etc., etc., etc. Okay, this is absolutely top of the line stuff, guys. And this is what a world class game designers. Uh, what a world-class game designer d- designer's portfolio looks like. So let me know in the comments what you think of that. What do you think? Impressive? You guys impressed with that? Yeah, so Genu Game says one day it will be mine. Uh, Bharat Khemani says, all right, okay. All right, now that I've shown you that, I'm going to show you another really, really, really good portfolio. And this is for someone from the Gamer to Make a Course. This is Nikhil. Nikhil is my student. I'm very proud. He's one of my best students at the Game to Maker program. He's a game designer. And at this point, Nikhil is not even done. I think he's about... uh, Are you there? Uh, Are you there? Yeah, he's there. So Nikhil, at this point, people are literally kind of fighting over him uh, to employ him. He's not even done over his course. And like, I'm on the phone with one guy saying, hey, man, I really like his portfolio. Can I get an interview with him? I'm thinking, hmm, he's actually working with me. So like, literally, this is what it looks like. So this is uh, Nikhil's portfolio. This is uh, is his first portfolio. He has less than one year of job experience. He's actually working with me on Mayu. He is a level designer for Mayu. As you can see, level design, Rogue Interactive. Uh, and he's also an you know, intern game designer. He has an art portfolio. And it, this is really cool. Like I, re- It's a very, very playful kind of portfolio. But it is really effective. It shows personality. Um, hello there. I'm Major Bacon. And he's actually, if you see, this is itch.io. So he actually, he's actually done, so I think you've done some HTML programming in itch. It's not easy to make this page on it. So he's a designer who is also a pretty decent uh, programmer. I love how he's got these little um, little pop-ups over here, these interactive pop-ups that, that glow. You can actually play this game uh, in the browser. And this is, it's a very simple little portfolio. And this is itch, uh, itch.io. Uh, his LinkedIn page, everything is over here. So this, people, is what a portfolio for a game designer looks like. If you want to succeed, these two um, portfolios, that is a great example of a professional portfolio, somebody who's got 10 years of experience. And this is a really, really good example of a beginner game designer portfolio that is going to get you a job. You have a portfolio like this, you got a job, right? Um, okay, let's see what you guys are saying. Um, so Karthik, I have on, on Discord, I actually have a channel called Portfolio. So feedback, you're most welcome to post your portfolio over there in Discord, and I will give you and I'll give you uh feedback. Okay. Um, all right. All right, people. Now that I've shown you some portfolios, let's get back into the presentation. Okay. Um, now the next thing that I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be talking about game design documentation. This is the gold standard, right? You guys have just seen um portfolios and you've seen the quality 
of work that that is shown over there and i showed you an example of a little bit of documentation which is uh showing the levels that this person had had worked on so now i'm going to be sharing some stuff with you which is actually from um the course just give me a second All right. This is this is actually I'm going to be using uh, the G2M course to actually give you an example. Let me make this a bit bigger. Okay. So if you have to if you have to make game design documentation, right? If you have to make game design documentation, I will show you what that looks like. I also, guys, I have this game design document template. Okay, I have this game design document template. And if you guys are most welcome uh, to have this, this is for uh, this is this is for download. So I'll be making it available for you guys. Um, but what this is based on is that this is based on the game to make a course. So now let's look at this part. Okay. Okay. So what do you put what do you put in uh whoops hang on a second guys hang on a second guys i need to figure this out Yes, so I essentially the most important thing about a game design document is the detail and the format. Sorry, I need to just log in once again. Give me a second, guys. Yeah, sorry, we are back. Yes, so you have to fill in the document in great detail. Now I'm going to be showing you some of the topics that you have to actually put in. So I'm going to go to module five of game design. And here you have the first thing that you're going to have to fill in in your game design document is gameplay and progression that is essentially one of the first topics that you have to be working on the next thing i'm going to show you is i'm going to show you there is actually a template which is provided for the game design program uh, for the spartans and this is what it looks like so essentially this is an excel sheet which has different tabs you can look on the bottom there is progression and difficulty there is story and narrative uh, character protagonist character antagonist game world level design and user interface so these are the different topics which are going to be in your game design document and you have to fill them in great detail so for example in progression difficulty enter your game name enter your dimensionality enter the genre of your game the perspective of your game the platform the gameplay overview and insert a main screen here so for example if i have a main screen i'm going to actually put it in i'm going to insert a picture uh, I have this screenshot right here, which I have made from my old game. And you can actually insert that over here. So this is what a mock-up looks like. So you would actually create this mock-up in Photoshop and you would insert it here. If you have to give a, a broad overview of the gameplay, do that here. And then you insert all these things here. Now, this game design document does not look very impressive it does not look uh, like something that would get you an interview this is the kind of game design document that you would actually practically use when you are making a game um, because it's really really shareable it has different tabs 
Um, so here you have experience, duration, in-game rewards. And sim similarly, you have tabs like story and narrative where you would write what the story of your game is. Uh, let me zoom in uh, once again a little bit over here. What is the story of your game? What is the mission of your game? What is the player motivation of your game? Here, you talk about the protagonist of your game. Um, you can talk about the kind of avatar you have, specific or non-specific. All this stuff is there in Game to Maker. It may not make a lot of sense if you're not there in the course. Is it a specific or non-specific avatar? Describe the personality of your protagonist. Write the story of the protagonist's life. What does your protagonist look like? Long hair, short hair, beard, clothes, color of clothes. Make a sketch of your protagonist. What is the mission of your protagonist? What is the motivation of your protagonist? So this is the kind of level that you have to go into detail when you are actually making a game design. Now, I actually have a few rules that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. Okay. Okay, so I have some rules which I'm going to be telling you for making great game design documentation. And my specialty in my career has been game design document. I love to write and I make really good documentation. And um, so here my rules are. Remember, if you understand how to make good documentation, if you learn how to make good documentation, it's literally like a golden ticket. Um, people really value that. It's a very rare skill in the game industry. If you're a good game designer and you're creating game design document, you're going to be an asset to the company because your game design document can be used by the entire team. They'll have clarity on the game. You'll be famous and your value as uh, as uh, as an employee or or someone as a team member is really really going to go up okay um first remember use as few words as possible okay do not like just go overboard writing things uh, what happens is that the first time you're going to write a document perhaps to describe a particular feature you're going to use a hundred words okay and then you're going to write a first draft of a document, which is going to be very wordy. You're going to use lots and lots of description, etc. You need to revise. You need to read over your document once again and say, hmm, do I actually need to use so many words? Can I remove this, this sentence? Can I? How can I do this better? So if you revise it the second, the third, the fourth time you do it, the number of words that you have used is going to get less and less because people actually have to read it. If you, if you are too wordy, people are not going to read it, right? So use as few words as possible. And remember lots of pictures and diagrams. Now, some of you guys who actually submitted your documents had some really good stuff in there, but a lot of you had the issue that it was very, very wordy. It was just like words and words and words and paragraphs, right? So in a game design document, I recommend like at least 40 to 50% of the volume that you're seeing in a game design document should be visual. It can be pictures, it can be references, it can be pie charts, it can be diagrams. So make sure that your game design document has neat and clean uh, pictures, diagrams, references. Okay. Next up, formatting is very, very important. Make sure that you're using a nice, clean, legible font. Make sure that uh, the margins are nice. Make sure it looks neat. Make sure it looks tidy. Don't have like a whole chunk paragraph of text. People don't like reading, guys. So um, if you have a big paragraph and somebody has to like read through, they're probably not going to read it. So make sure you use bullet points as far as possible. And neatness really, really counts for a game design document, right? Like if you look at this document that I've made right now, it's 
kind of based on my experience of making documentation, right? You can see I have used few words. I've used bullet points. There's a very, very clear header. There is a uh, text, which is smaller, talking a little about it. There are fonts. I'm going one by one so you can read them. So use this as an example of how you can create good documentation. Also, I have to say, if you have decent English, it really, really helps. Nobody likes to see grammatical mistakes, spelling mistakes uh, in a game design document. Because remember, guys, if you want to be a world-class game designer, you're not, you're going to be dealing, you're going to be working in a multinational company, right? You will be working with people from all over the world. It's possible one part of your team may be in the UK, one part of your team may be in the US, and they'll be reading your documentation, right? And they should be able to understand it. So now you don't have to be Shashi Tharoor, like I always say, but try and do your best to have, use a spell checker. There are, there are software, there are courses. Use Grammarly, dude, Karthik. That's absolutely awesome. That's a top tip. Five stars to Karthik Raj. Use Grammarly. Okay, Grammarly is awesome. Uh, I don't need it because, you know, I, my English is reasonably okay. But if you have a little bit of doubt, use Grammarly. It'll be really, really helpful to you. Okay, and remember, detail. You have to write about stuff in great detail. But the thing is, you can't be too descriptive about it. Now, there's a balance, okay? Like making a great game design document is a skill, is an art. You're not going to get it straight off the bat. Okay, It's not going to be like you're just going to start uh, off and then you have a great game design document. This takes time. It may take you a month, right? So in Gamer to Maker, we take this very, very seriously. I actually have something which is a, a breakdown. So one of the most fun exercises we have in Gamer to Maker is that we do an analysis of a playground game, uh, which is something like you, you guys used to play in your childhood. Like I used to play, you know, uh, Seven Stones or like, you know, uh, Gulli Danda or Kho Kho or some kind of playground game or like Pakadam Pakada, even how hide and seek. So what I ask students to do in the Game to Make a course, I, I ask them to break down the playground game into an explanation. And that is how they start. So they submit this exercise to me. We go on a live call and I deconstruct it. I give them feedback and I let them make revisions. And this is the start of how I get people and gamer to make it to start make, instead of starting with like a video game, we start with a playground game from our childhood, right? That is the start of how people are taught to make uh, design documentation, right? Now also, if you're going to be making documentation, you have to share it. It's not like you're going to be, you know, just making it and using it yourself. If you're a game designer, you are making documentation, you will have to put it out there and share it with the team. So the best way to do this is Google Sheets and Docs. It's absolutely awesome. The nice thing is that you can share it with everybody and you can see the revision. So if someone makes changes, to it you can put comments in there you can have discussions like i can't tell you how amazing google sheets and docs is for game design documentation guy i really 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 recommend it you know you can type it in word or you can you can upload it um okay um some uh some people talking karthik is saying personally um I express better in speech than writing and I'm best uh, expressing in drawing while sharing my screen. That's really good. That's very, very good. Um, but I would recommend also improving your writing skills, right? It, whether you're a game designer or anybody working in a game team or anything, you know, if you see, you can get better, right? Writing is not something that comes overnight. You can write, you can get feedback, you can get better and better and better. But if you can write well, that is a really, really uh, big benefit. Also, Vivek says, um, awesome trip from Vivek. Vivek is saying about English, just watch English movies and series and talk to people in English and play games with subtitles you and learn. Also, I would recommend read, just read the newspaper, get an English newspaper and read the damn thing. Every single day for one hour, your vocabulary will improve, your 
your understanding, your writing, reading skills will improve. Okay. Uh, all right. Oh, master ability as it says, I am just terrible at everything. That's not true. That's definitely not true. All right. Um, okay. All right, guys. So now what we're going to do is that we, I'm going to be showing you, um, I'm going to be showing you. Let's hang on a second, guys. All right. Remember yesterday I was talking, uh, I was talking about building skills. I was talking about how you guys can start, how you guys can enter the game industry at a really, really good position. So how as a game designer, can you build the skills that you need and make a strong start. How can you join the game industry with a really, really high starting salary? And also, what are the salaries? I briefly touched upon it yesterday. And what I'm going to be doing now is that I'm going to be clearing all of your doubts by showing you um, the video which was recorded by Joseph, who, as I mentioned, is a good friend of mine. Um, and he's going to be explaining all about the game industry to you guys. So give me a second. All right. Two. Let me know if everything is okay audio wise. Hello, and thank you, Rahul, for this opportunity to speak to um, some of your budding game designers. Uh, to introduce myself, um, I'm Joseph Cairns. I'm CEO of Adventure Recruitment. We are a specialist games recruitment company. We help uh, lots of game developers to find the best uh, talent in the industry. Um, I have a little presentation to share with you. So I'll just start this. I hope you can see this all right. So um, so that's me and our company. Um, I'm from the UK. Hello, and thank you, Rahul, for this opportunity to speak to um, some of your budding game designers. Uh, to introduce myself, um, I'm Joseph Cairns. I'm CEO of Adventure Recruitment. We are a specialist games recruitment company. We help uh, lots of game developers to find the best uh, talent in the industry. Um, I have a little presentation to share with you. So. I'll just start this. I hope you can see this all right. So, um, so that's me and our company. Um, I'm from the UK and I moved to California and I got into games recruiting back in uh, 2002 is when I started in games. And then I sold my business and I moved to India back in 2006. We've been helping companies across uh, India um, as well as the US. And in, when I first started in India, it was just a lot of art outsourcing studios. Um, then came uh, more sort of back office studios for big companies like Zinger and Ubisoft and Glue. Um, what's been great to see over the last five years is the market really develop a lot into original product companies. Um, some of the ones that we've had, uh, like MPL, Moonfrog, Jet Synthesis, Leela Games, Bombay Play. And those are the kind of companies where there is now the opportunity to, to work on the design of original games. Um, 
we help companies to find the best talent. So we work with people who are already experienced, but um, Rahul asked me just to share some thoughts on um, being a, a game designer and getting into the business. Um, so uh, one thing he asked me to update you about is the sort of state of the market and salaries. So the Indian games market is the hottest I've ever seen it in the last 15 years that I've been here in India. All positions are in high demand, um, but especially developers, tech artists, product managers, and designers. Designers is one of the mo most high demand position right now. Uh, historically, um, clients have complained that there just aren't enough designers in India and people haven't grown up playing games the same as they have with, uh, in Western countries. But this is changing and you guys may very well be examples of this sort of first wave of people who've grown up playing games all their life and playing international games. Um, so the kind of salaries that we have from clients right now for experienced designers, we've got, um, you know, sort of mid senior and lead level designers, uh, three to 10 years of experience, you could expect to pay about eight to 25 lakhs CTC per year. Uh, we have positions for design directors um, going from 20 to 50. We've got one position even up to 70 lakhs uh, right now. And then um, sometimes designers can progress and move on. I'll come into this in more detail, but progress into being like a product manager. So these are some of the highest paid positions, lead product managers making about half to one crow per year. So a typical career path for a designer that we see is you might get in as an intern or even have to do QA, um, but your first proper job as a designer might be a level designer and um, you get promoted to be a mid-level designer, senior designer, and then lead designer. Um, lead designer, sometimes games are so big that they have a couple of lead designers and then they have a design director. Um, so it really depends to find out more about exactly what each position means, but the design director could be in charge of one very big game, or it could, could be uh, overseeing lead designers across multiple games. Um, and as I just mentioned, you could use this as an avenue to switch into becoming a product manager and getting more into the analytics and the financial side of the games or a producer if you really enjoy managing people. To be a game designer is a great uh, background to progress. Um, and even to become a studio manager, some of the top, I mean, it is the top uh, of the pyramid and not everybody will, will want to or be able to progress to the top. But some of the top studio managers are people who love to play games and have, have started designing them. So it's one of the best backgrounds you can get. Um, so my advice for you for starting out as a designer, I think firstly, the hardest thing is getting started, getting your first job. And there's, there's really no easy solution, certainly not in a, in a couple of minutes of sharing it with you. I mean, first and foremost is to really develop yourself. There's no magic solution to how you apply for jobs or how you write your resume. You have to really become the best you can be. And a great way to start that is getting trained by Rahul and his design program. Um, hopefully, he will give you enough of a a step up or a stepping stone that you can then train yourself and go beyond that and really understand all of the, the huge resources there are, are online. Um, and then to get in, actually do some designs of your own, so mods on games with, with level editors or doing original game design documents. Um, and then when you hopefully are lucky enough to get your first professional job designing, um, to prioritize experience over salary. Even if you want to maximize your salary, the best way to do that longer over the longer term is to get great experience that will catapult you into to high profile games where the money then doesn't become a problem. So, um, that's my quick introduction. It's a, it's a great time to be in the games industry. 
I will quit. Sorry, one second. There we go. So it's a great time to be in the industry. I wish you all the best in uh, setting yourself up for a career in game design. If you do decide to, to learn more about it, that's what you want to do. It's a great, creative, fun thing to do. And uh, we would love to work with you in a couple of years. Our clients are always asking us for designers, but you would need at least sort of two years experience. Uh, we'd love to work with you. All right. Thank you. All the best. All right. So that was Joseph talking about game design in India, right? Thank you, Joseph, even though you're not live. Um, yes, guys, don't worry about it. I'm going to be reviewing the submissions. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be announcing the prize and I'm going to be giving you some feedback. All that stuff is going to happen. Uh, hold on to your horses, right? Now, as promised, guys, what we're going to be doing now is I'm going to be having some students. I remember I talked about some student projects and I'm, I'm going to be inviting my students uh, who are actually working on games. These are uh, teams in Gamer to Maker who have been working on game projects and I'm going to be inviting them on me and we're going to be presenting to you. So, okay. Um, folks are going to be joining the stream very soon. All right. Look who's here. It's Nikhil. So, guys, you may uh, you may have seen Major Bacon, right? This here is Major Bacon. So he's Nikhil. Uh, he is he was from the first batch of Gamer to Maker, what I call the Origins batch. He was one of the few people to join. He's, you know, has multiple talented guy. He's a game designer who also knows art and some programming. So now, uh, Nikhil, tell us about your experience. Very briefly, tell us about your experience as a Spartan in the Gamer to Maker course. Right. Sure thing, Rahul. Uh, so... I think it was around uh, the inauguration of the G2M server where I got like super interested in this gamer to make a course that was happening. And uh, it it was pitched as something that was really uh, different from, you know, get textbook, get notebook, copy paste and <laughs> do an exam, get certificate and stuff. So now I'm, so I just uh, assumed why not? Uh, why not apply for it? And maybe maybe just uh, get a bit more experience uh into what i was getting myself into and yeah uh, it was more than so i was tell us about I tell us about your journey tell us about your journey before you joined the course like did you study what is what was your educated education experience trying to make games before game to maker right um i was doing my btech csc in vit valor and around my second year i thought you know what i'm going to go into the game industry and so after, like, it was 2020, and uh, I graduated uh, from there, and uh, I started uh, looking for places to go to because I didn't have any experience other than just that, uh, just making one game, uh, which was also a team effort with me and a friend of mine. And uh, it was it was very limited experience, I would say. Uh, I did the design and programming. I learned... That I'm happy to work on that game. I was happy working on that game because I got to know Unity programming, C Sharp, and all that stuff. So after after that, I I think I I went for an advanced diploma at um, Backstage Pass for game art and design. So since I got a little uh, knowledge in game programming, I thought maybe I'll get some knowledge in game art as well. And design was where I was. Uh, I thought I was. Um, uh, I was I needed more experience or needed someone to guide me or anything like that. Lo and behold, G2M came up and uh, Rahul Rahul and I pretty much clicked and it I think uh, it was way too easy to understand that uh, whatever knowledge we had before, it can be built up upon within this course and stuff. And uh, that's that's how I got into that uh, the entire what do I say? game industry in general
You're muted, uh, Rahul. <laughs> You're muted. Oh yeah, sorry. So what we're going to be doing now is I'm going to be adding Anirudh, who is the other team member, and these two guys are going to be presenting their game. It's going to be like a few minutes, quick front presentation. I'm going to remove myself and add him now. Hello, hello everyone. Thanks, thank you, Rahul sir, for having us here. Uh, so I think I'll let uh, Nikhil start with uh, a small introduction to what our project actually is, and then I'll just present some gameplay. Sure. Yeah. Um, so initially, like uh, since we were the origins batch in G2M Close, we were we were supposed to design these concept documents, and uh, people really liked the concept that I pitched pitched for Arise. Uh, the the project's name was Arise at the time. And it was a 2D side-scrolling sort of a Metroidvania sort of thing where uh, the player kept on going, uh, progressing and defeating enemies. But uh, the, the, the catch is these enemies, they have specific abilities and the player had a choice to use those abilities after killing them or spawn an ally who can help the player kill other enemies in the room and progress on, but uh, at the cost of not using that sick ability, of course. So that's where the, the idea of killing, killing an enemy or using an ability, that's where the crux of the entire uh, uh, game started to, uh, how do I say, grow from. And I think uh, Anirudh and I can both vouch for the fact that it's been uh, a wild ride uh, coming from that to where it is right now. Yep. A lot of, a uh, lot of cuts, a lot of, uh, issues started to come up. Uh, and the, the reason is because we had a lot of difficulty, um, with the main thing, which is scope. We, I feel like we overscoped too much on what we wanted as our side scroller to be what we want, what kind of enemies we wanted, what kind of story we wanted to implement. And for the first first iteration, I don't think it worked out very well too, too much. But now, um, thanks to our uh, awesome designer, uh, UI designer, Sharik, and our amazing uh, artist, Ash, and also the best, <laughs> Anirudh and Pranav for the the uh, programming parts. We will get to see where our our little game is right now. Yeah. So I assume you can you guys can see the screen. Oh, I think you can. So I will uh, I will be starting. So all right. So basically, right now we have a very simple game. We have not really designed any levels yet, but we have a bunch of mechanics. So the player has uh, abilities which which he can fight. And uh, I'll start the game now, and uh, you'll see a bit of a mess, but I'll try to explain what's happening. So this is the player in the middle, and uh, what you see there are enemies. The black ones, they are melee, so they have to get in range of us, and they'll attack us. The blue ones attack us from range. I can, I can attack them and kill them. I also have a ranged attack myself. And if you look at the left, and you'll see that there are something called threads. So basically, threads are like fuel. I can use them to create allies. And uh, these two icons that you see in the bottom, they are the two options I have for allies. The blue one is the range enemy, and the green one is uh, melee enemy. So that one you see there, that's an ally. And I'm making a melee as well. The green one, that's an ally. Can, can you maximize? Can you maximize the game window, Anirudh? Oh, uh, yes. Sir. Uh, is that working? Yeah, I had it working. All right. So it's just a simple game right now. So the ability is the player has is the range attack and uh, the minion resurrection thing. And uh, we have a teleport. Which, if it works, yeah, there you go. There's no effects right now for all the abilities because they were, they were very recently made. 
and we have a slam ability with which we attack in an AoE. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, what we have to show. You're muted again, Rahul, sir. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so this is it, guys. Awesome stuff. Now, this essentially, what these guys are doing right now is what game design, is what game development is all about. These guys got together. Uh, they scoped an idea. They talked among themselves. They tried implementing it. They went up with changes. They went through a lot of struggle. Like, they went through that process, right? And... It wasn't just the making of the game. It was a discussion. It was a talk among themselves. It was the scoping down, the scoping up, the changes. This is what really happens in game development. This is what happens in the game industry. So what these guys are doing here is that they are simulating a proper game industry environment within the course. And then obviously when they graduate, they have a game. And they've gone through that process. So any studio looks at them, they looks at their experience and portfolio, and they're like, okay, these guys are 100% game industry ready. That's what it is. All right, guys, thank you so much. And I think what we're going to do now is we're going to have a quick presentation of the next game uh, uh, of five minutes. So thank you, guys. I will see you in the course. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you. All right, now the next one. This is our sec. This this is our original batch, guys. Th these are the guys from the origins batch. These guys started the course in like July, August last year, and now these guys are actually close to finishing that course. I'm really proud of them. It's a lot of work. It's a massive amount of work. But it's really, really worth it. Okay, so we're just waiting for the next uh, the next team member to, to join our game. So what did you guys think? What did you guys think? Let, let me know what you guys thought of the games, uh, what you guys thought of the presentation. I'm really curious to know. Because these uh, guys, so Master Ability asked how many batches are going on. So I have three batches going on right now. One batch is going to graduate in a couple of months. They're going to be done. Um, and I have another batch starting right now that I'm going to be telling you about right now. So there are three batches. Um, okay, so Dipinder is here. Um, hey guys. Hi, Dipinder. How are you doing? I'm good. How so Dipinder, guys, Dipinder is Dipinder also from the Origins batch. Dipinder actually has his own company. Dipinder is has a company called Donali Games, which makes hyper casual. He's one of the entrepreneurs who joined the batch. And the, you know the cool thing is. The Pindar has actually hired a bunch of guys from within the batch of Game Window Maker to work in his company. So, which is a very unique situation. Three months into the course, a bunch of people from the course actually got hired. And so now I'm going to leave it uh, to the Pindar. I'm going to take it away, the Pindar. You can quickly just give a, an overview of your game and present it. Yeah, let me just uh, start with my screen share. Uh... All right, so so this is uh, basically um, a chess-based puzzle game, and uh, about me, Rahul sir have told uh, enough, I think, and uh, so I'll just talk about the game. And um, if can you guys hear the audio? Should I just uh, remove it? Well, I can't uh, get any comments from you guys. The audio should be okay. The audio volume is quite good. That's okay. It's too high? No, no. The audio is volume the audio is fine. fine. Fine, fine. Yeah, it's, it's good. The audio volume is good. So basically now, <clears throat> chess is something uh, I, I believe is uh, one of the world's oldest turn-based strategy game. And uh, over the centuries, I would say, uh, people have enjoyed this game and... Uh, and nowadays, people uh, try to turn this turn-based game into usually another form that is called a simple, simply a puzzle game. Okay, when people want to play alone and they just want to use their head, scratch their head. So uh, there are a lot of games out there that uh, try to 
डू सम चेंजेस इन द गेम इन चेस एंड मेक समथिंग नाइस बट एट द एंड ऑफ द डे एवरी चेस पजलर इज अल्टीमेटली अटर्न बेस्ड स्ट्रैटेजी गेम और अटर्न बेस्ड पजल गेम बट वी हैव डन इन टेल ऑफ ऑनर इज बेसिकली रिमूव द टर्न बेस्ड पार्ट एंड मेक इट अ रियल टाइम स्ट्रैट गेम now this is world's first real time chess puzzler and we come we came up with this concept in the g2m program and we started this project some time ago and from the, since then we have come a long way and now uh, obviously there are miles to go but i'll give you um a little low music of yeah my music is low so that you can hear me if i am not audible then <laughs> please tell me and um, yeah so i just give you a quick walk through so what does real time chess mean there was a starting screen this is the level loader uh, currently it's in progress so i just have uh, one level set up where all the development work is going on the dragon dropped us on a on a battlefield now this as i mentioned is a real time uh, chess game so the enemies are not waiting for you to make your turn they are going to move around like in a in a, in a stealth game or uh, you can make your moves irrespective of where the enemies are now uh, one thing is like this enemy rook is just walking around he's not waiting for you to make a move other is if i try to move like in a in a turn based game if i pick up my rook and i move him here in a turn based game it would just go there and stop but in a real time game the enemy is going to react in real time this dude is not going to let me pass his path okay i'll watch this he caught me there and he killed me that's it i'm dead that's real time chess for you guys and in order to make the kills now we have to generate some other mechanics and one of the mechanics that uh, is to we allow the player to transform into other chess pieces now this is where chess is meeting splinter cell or i would say some sort of games like that uh, it's, it's a merger of puzzle strategy and action now i don't just have to plan my move i also have to time my move for example this rook is moving i'll just take this again i'll go here i'll stand here now he's in my range he cannot kill me i cannot kill him but how can i kill him that i can become a pawn i turn into a pawn and i wait for him to come back at this point i would be out of his kill zone but he is now in my kill zone i kill the rook i turn back into a rook i move here i kill the pawn and then i finish my checkpoint i turn into a bishop for a shortcut and go there now that's the first checkpoint done now apart from transitions and um uh, this i mean this another uh, level of fun here uh, that dragon that we saw in the beginning wasn't just there for show or he wasn't just a courier service that dropped us on the on the field we can also summon a dragon and make a kill it's one of the power ups that you have in this game and uh let's say if now uh, there are two ways i can finish this level i can turn simply you can play this like this i will kill this pawn now if i try to kill this rook now there's a bishop standing here on the white and he's going to kill me if i come here so i need to get a limit uh, rid of this guy how do i do that there are two ways number one i turn into a knight i jump over because knight is the only chess piece that can jump over other chess pieces so knight has the capability of jumping over a kill zone but i'm going to show you a cool way i'm going to summon my dragon i'm going to aim at him and call for him and he's burnt gone and now i can very easily kill this guy and capture my sweet black that's another checkpoint done and uh, also i will like there is a lot more in this game i not enough time to um 
explain everything but yeah there are more power ups there uh, there's a progression there's a uh, there's a whole storyline to this game but maybe um, for some other time how's the response from chess players well i i, I haven't tested this game outside as of now because it is still in production and uh, we are going to uh, start uh, reaching out to the player very soon with the development build uh, develop build and if you guys want to try this game then stay tuned on the uh, g2m server and i will give you the uh, regular progress of the game and maybe you can also sign up for the um, tester program and be and try the game out yeah it's uh, uh, the game is uh, i haven't built a playable demo as of now but yeah you can get it on g2m server and when if you stay tuned with us yes people thank you dipendra that was absolutely awesome i think it's such a beautiful looking game and i'm so proud guys it's so amazing to be able to see to get students together working together building games learning stuff you know everybody is excited about this game and this game will be on the g2m server soon you will be able to follow it it's just a few months left for this game to actually break cover so thank you so much dipender um i'll see you soon thank you all right all right guys what do you think about that that was so cool huh these games were made by people in the game to make a course all right so very soon guys um we are almost at the point while that presentation was going on i was once again looking at the new submissions and it's a very difficult choice and you guys have some really good entries and we're going to be talking about that soon next what i'm going to be doing now guys is i'm going to be talking about the gamer to make a course lots of people asking about that and now i'm going to do a presentation on the gamer to make a course on the gamer to make a game design course let's get started first i want to ask you is what exactly is it that a good game design course does so a good game design course the first thing is that a good game design course has mentors from the game industry that are going to point you in the right direction um it's one thing to learn from the internet but remember if you are learning unity if you're learning unreal if you're watching youtube videos there are literally lakhs of people who have access to those same videos those same resources and they're going to get up make the same result they're going to make the same small games they're going to have a itch.io page with 5 or 10 clone games so what differentiates you what helps you to get a job be a better game designer it is a mentor from the game industry right and that is one of the main things that we have in game to maker um the next point is a strong community of game makers to learn and collaborate with guys this is absolutely huge now if you go to uh, a college or if you go to a school one of the biggest benefits that you guys are going to have is that you're going to have not only mentors and teachers but you're going to be part of a community you're going to have peers who are also making games they will be learning you will be learning you'll be able to exchange information with each other you'll be able to team up with each other in the game industry teamwork is everything community is everything i'm sure many times a lot of you guys say okay i am a designer or i am a artist i want to make a game but i can't find a programmer i can't find a designer how do i find these people how do i build a game project how do i build my first game how do i build a nice portfolio and this is where it is a strong community of game makers to learn and collaborate with i have designed the gamer to make a course to provide these things and lastly a game project that allows students to implement the principles learned during the course the problem with colleges the problem with courses in india is that they are purely theory courses somebody will come who is doesn't even have a game industry background and the people who are at vit right now will attest to this that most game college and courses don't even have people from the game industry and they just give you some theory there is no game project there is no learning so remember for a good course you need to have all these points and these are the points which are in the game to make a course now i want to talk a little bit about what the structure of game to make a course is we have okay let me just going to 
break this back a little bit. Essentially, there are three components in G2M, right? Firstly, you have the recorded classes. Now, the recorded classes are available on an online platform, which you can access at any time. You can do it at night, you know, three days a week, five days a week. You can log in at your own convenience and you can watch the recorded classes, right? Next, you have the Discord server. The Discord server is where you guys are on right now. There are some channels which are actually locked which are not available to people who are not signed up for the course. And these are the channels where all the action happens, all the mentorship happens, all the projects happen. These are all on the Discord server. So if you're in the course, you will be able to hang out at whatever time you want, work on program, hang out with your friends, like your batchmates. Now, these guys you just saw, they're all batchmates. Their friends do. They work together. They're part of a community. And they're always hanging out on Discord. They're listening to music. Um, they're working on projects, etc. Right? And lastly, you have the live, live coaching calls. Now, this is a speciality of Gamer to Maker. Every week, we have a live coaching call, especially for the first part of the program when you need more guidance. It's going to be me mostly, or it's going to be one of the specialized mentors who's going to be in a Zoom call with you. It's going to be a small call. It's not like they're going to be like 100 people on the call. It's a small call in which everybody knows each other and you're going to be going, you're going to ha have place to answer questions, to, to ask doubts, get clarified, um, you know, get career guidance on projects, on assignment, or whatever you want. This happens every single week, and these are live coaching classes, okay? Um, right. Then you have something else, which is the live master classes. So what exactly are live master classes? Now, some of you may want to go beyond the basics, right? You may want to go beyond the basics. You want to maybe learn level design in great depth, or you want to learn... Uh, uh, you want to learn narrative, you want to be a narrative designer. So what I do is I have live master classes in which I myself conduct them. And there are people from outside uh, who are my friends, who are seniors in the game industry. We conduct live master classes in which we go into depth for specific topics. And once you attend these live master classes, you will really be able to go into depth in specific topics. Right. So this is another one of the specialities of the Gamer to Maker course. Um, all right. Now let me go back to my presentation and I'm quickly going to go over the salient features of the course. All right. So I'm like, I'm quite proud. Uh, I'm quite proud to say that Gamer to Maker is the only authentic game design course in India right now. There are 50 plus hours of, so how often the live masterclass, it usually happens like once a month, once every 15 days, it depends, right? Next, you have more than 50 hours of recorded classes on on the uh, on the platform. You have access to masterclasses on level design, game marketing, and others. We have classes on uh, on, on lots and lots of topics, which you'll be able to access as soon as uh, you enroll for the course. We also have a really nice masterclass, which is on programming best practice by Anshul Sony. He's a former student of mine who actually works in the US on AAA games. And this class is also available to you guys. You also have the live classes, which are from the previous batches. And everybody, you have access to all these live classes. There's more than 30 hours of that. You have templates for document. You have a game design document. You have concept. Like all the templates, cheat sheets, everything is going to be provided to you as part of the Gamer to Maker course, right? Um, and at the end of it, you're going to get a certificate of completion, very, very importantly. And also, you will be getting a letter of recommendation if you are good. Right. If you if I if you have shown me your performance in the course is good and that you have done well and you're worthy of a job, I myself I'm going to recommend you. And I've already recommended several people who have gotten jobs in the program. Next, some of you may ask, who is this course for? Right? Who can do this course? Who cannot do this course? So I have some people for you. This is Ajay. Ajay is doing B Tech. He's tried some stuff, you know, he's made one or two games by himself, but he doesn't really know where that is going. 
the course is designed in such a way that Ajay can do his B-Tech. He is not going to have a problem. The course can be done side by side. Next up, we have Binoy. Binoy works in software. So he's a B-Tech CSE and he's got a job as a software engineer. And at this point, he doesn't really like his job because what he really wants to do is that he makes to make video games. He wants to be a game designer or he wants to be a programmer. He can work in Gamer, he can study Gamer to Maker. He makes games, he plays games, and he wants to make games. Next up, you have Charlie. Charlie is also a professional. He's in freelance graphics, right? He's tried some stuff. It didn't work out. He really wants to make games. He can be in the Gamer to Maker program. Next, you have Diljit. These are all fictional characters, by the way. If you haven't guessed, Diljit, and you can say A, B, C, D if you hadn't guessed. So Diljit is just given class 12. He's just finished. Um, he really likes Minecraft and he wants to make video games. He's not sure whether he wants to be a designer, artist, programmer, gamer to maker is for him. Lastly, you have Anisha. Uh, you see what I did there, didn't you? A, B, C, D, E. Anisha actually has a job in television. She's working. She's a working professional and she's really interested in video games as well. And she is a story writer. She wants to do narrative. She wants to make beautiful game universes. She wants to do all these things. The Gamer to Maker course is for Inisha. All of them are from different educational backgrounds. They do different things. They have different personalities. Gamer to Maker is for all of them. All of these people can do it while working, while studying, the course is designed to give you mentorship and instruction in your spare time. It will not interfere with your studies, with your work, with your exams, with your life. Um, if you miss some classes, that's okay. I don't encourage people skipping classes, but if you're going to skip, skip a live class, you're most welcome to watch it. It's going to be uploaded the next day. All of these people can be Spartans. Just quickly go over the game design course topics. Um You'll be introduced to the basics of game design, player psychology. You'll be introduced to reward systems. You will be introduced to all the different types of fun and stuff that you cannot find on the internet. Like I have gone to a, one of the best game schools in the world and everything I've learned, I'm going to be teaching you, right? You will learn how to come up with a game idea that actually works. You know, you can have crazy ideas. You want to make this game and that game. But does it work? Is it actually going to sell in the market? You're going to be learning all that stuff. You're going to come up with game ideas that actually work. You've seen these courses. You've seen these games that these guys are making. They're, these have been built from scratch. You will go very, very deep into creating game design documentation. If you want, by the time you end the course, you will be a master game design document creator. Next, you will receive instruction in level design, narrative, and story design. I love that stuff. As you can see, Mayu, my game, is essentially goes very, very deep into narrative and story design. It's something I'm really interested in. You learn gameplay, progression, user interface design, all that stuff in great detail. You will learn character design. You will learn how to build strong game characters um, that integrate, that are powerful, that people can really identify with. And you will also learn project planning, how to actually produce, how to actually do some project planning and how to actually have a uh, have a product in uh, as a live project, right? Now, I want to quickly go through how this is going to work. What are the steps, okay? Firstly, you're going to enroll and then there's going to be graduation and there's going to be a 12-month gap between this. So the entire access you have to the program is for 12 months. And here's how this works. First of all, you're going to do something really awesome called a goal setting exercise. You guys are going to sit down and fill up a sheet in which you talk about your goals, what you want to achieve, what kind of games you want to work, where in the world you want to work, um, you know, what you want to be doing five years, 10 years. So you're going to really think about what your goals as a game maker are. And you are going to be telling me those and you're going to be putting them on paper and I'm going to be giving you advice on that. And that is a very, very powerful exercise. Next, you're going to learn how to deconstruct games. Remember I talked about the playground game exercise. You're going to be doing a deconstruction, which is a very, very useful exercise.
Whoops, sorry guys. Um, we are back. Can you guys hear me? If you guys can hear me, let me know. Yeah, we are back. All right. Sorry about that. Looks like I have one of my internet connections. Uh, all right. So we're going to be doing deconstruction. At you learning how to present, you will be actually coming up with game ideas and you will be presenting them to your teammates. You'll have a concept document and really like the game industry, you'll be pitching it. You'll learn how to pitch. You'll learn how to make a really good concept document, present it to your peers. And then what's going to happen is that you're going to be learning all the fundamentals, like I said, and then you're going to be starting to build teams. In the first three months, you're going to be doing all these things and you're going to be getting ready just for your game projects. And this is going to happen in the first three months. After that, you're going to be learning conceptualization. You're going to be coming up with your game ideas and you're going to be guided for that. You're going to be doing market research. I'm going to be showing you how you can go and research on similar games. Make sure that your game actually has a target market. You understand who you are making this game for. You're going to learn how to scope projects. You're going to kind of like come up with a crazy big idea. And I'm going to tell you how to scope the project in such a way that you can actually build it. You will be pitching your concept and then there will be one game which is selected by you guys and by me. And then you guys are going to start working on that game. You're going to form teams. You're going to do project planning and you're going to actually produce that. Game. Which you saw right now, these games are all in production. Then you're going to actually learn how to market these games and then you're going to actually release these games. So this is what you're going to be doing within nine months. And after this, you move into the career preparation phase, the polishing phase. And what you're going to be doing now is going, you're going to start putting this game that you made. You're going to start building a portfolio. You're going to be doing your resume. And you're going to be getting advice and guidance from me for all these things. You're going to be doing your portfolio. You're going to be doing your resume. You're going to be doing your LinkedIn profile. And if you do well, you will get a recommendation from me as well. Okay, and you will help in placement. So there are guys who in my course are right now in interviews because what happens is that in my network, I have people coming. Um, yes, Anirudh and Bacon are in project planning. They're actually not in project planning. They're actually in production uh, for their game right now. These are games actually in production. I'm going to be released in the next few months. Okay, so I also help with placements. It depends if you're good, but what happens is that people actually come to me and they say, hey, Rahul, listen, man, we are desperate for people. We need designers, artists, programs. Please, can you help us? And I take the best people from my course. And I say, okay, call this person, get your resume. So this is what I do, right? I absolutely, I love to see people getting jobs. And this is what I do, right? So you will be helped with placements if you are good. All right. Now, how game to make a course? It's not just about game design, right? There's a game design course, there's a game project, and then there is a game art mentorship, and there is a game programming mentorship. Now, these guys all work together, right? People who are in the mentorship program for art get trained in the fundamentals of art, and then they have a chance to actually work in the game project similarly people learn the basics of uh, mentoring people learn the basics of programming they get mentored in programming and then they are able to actually join the game projects which means that artists programmers and designers working together on the same projects so all the courses in g2m revolve around the projects from the game design course so that you don't just learn the concept theory to actually have a chance to work on a game project so all right guys um that's okay we have some um all right that that's the bot game yesterday as well okay all right guys so that was about game to make a course now people the way it is happening right now is that the Gamer to Make a Batch is open now. Okay. 
There are people on the waiting list who have been given a chance, but tonight the batches are all open. The game design batch is launching soon. It is open for enrollment and you guys can actually go and enroll right now. If you have questions, if you have more doubts, you can come on the Discord server tonight. After this, it's going to be an after party. I'll be there and you can actually talk to me. I'm going to be looking at some game design documents that you guys have submitted as well. I'll be looking at them. So make sure that if you have questions, come now. Remember, guys, I open the batch for a very limited time. I have limited people on the batch because I don't want to have too many people. I do this because I love it. I have a good job, which pays me really well. And I do this because fundamentally, I like teaching people. I want to, to build a community. It's a very, very limited. Just one second, guys. Okay. All right. So uh, fundamentally, the I, I like to have small batches in the game design course. This is open for a limited time. So those who want to join can enroll now. If you have any doubts, if you have any questions, you can get in touch with me. You can you know ping me on Discord, and I'll be there live on Discord tonight. All right. Um, now let's get to the real thing that you guys have all been waiting for. I'm going to change my internet connection. So you may lose me for a second. I have two internet connections. One is great uh, and one is not that great. Give me a second, okay? No, switch connections, you lose me for a second. And I'm back. Okay. All right, guys. Now, who here, who here is excited to know about the projects? Hmm? A submission, the game design workshop. Who here is excited? I am. I'm very excited. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the top three with you guys. Okay. I'm going to share the top three. So Neha is asking if I'm only interested in game art mentorship. Yes, Neha. There is a separate mentorship for game art. You can enroll for game art separately. Okay. All right, guys. So what I'm going to do is, okay, before I start, one thing I have to tell you guys is that this was very, very hard for me to do because so many of you guys submitted. And like I said, I was so proud to see these entries. Okay. And what I have done is I have selected the top three uh, from all of these. And it was between Shagun and I. So there are going to be three um, that are I'm going to show you now. And, and one of them... And I'll tell you what is the order and they're going to be getting part scholarships. So let's go. So I'm going to select all three. And in the end, I'm going to tell you which one is the winner. Okay. All right. All right. This is one which is called fires and steam by rohit sony rohit are you here yes he is this is really really nice rohit i absolutely love the concept i love the presentation um and you know you've mentioned here artwork is taken on the internet is only used for reference and impression which is really awesome right um i love the formatting I love the way you presented it. Immediately when I look at this, I have an idea about the game. Uh, about Fires and Steam is a grand strategy game that gives you control of the nations to rule as you see fit, make theocratic nation, become the man, the god, and lead your people to salvation. Or rule them with an iron fist, write your own history, and build an empire to live for ages and make sure our empire survives a great winter. Beautiful, very, very well written. You read this, uh, it's basically like a high concept. You read it and immediately 
you are hooked, right? Uh, he says, in the frigid lands of the continent, uh, people were divided into many small tribes. Now, if you see, guys, uh, the nice thing I like about here is that within one page, right, within his first page, he's got a beautiful picture here. And he has, he really explains what the experience of the game is, the feeling of the game. Uh, you have this nostalgic, powerful feeling when you read this, right? Yes, Croc, exactly. the writing skill is very, very good. And like I said, for a game designer, your writing has to be good. So very, very powerful. Okay, next, what can the player do? Very, very clear, says. Take control of one of the many nations. Decide on how to rule it. Very, very clearly explain as to what the player can do. Um, what is the player trying to accomplish? What are the goals of the player? Overall, what are the rules? What are the victory conditions? What are the losing conditions? Cool factor, why you should play it. You write history as you see fit. Explore hundreds of dynamic events that are yours to experience from merely troubling walls, etc. Similar games, he's even done a bit of a he's even done a bit of a competitive analysis, which is very important. Talked about the game features. The only complaint I have is that this part is very long. Nobody is going to read this. This is way too long. This ideally, like you should have finished here. You should have finished here. Uh, the last part was not really very important. Okay. So that was Rohit Sony, and next on my uh, next on my list is just give me a second. All right, the next one is Fate of the Arisen. Fate of the Arisen by Abhudeya. Abhudeya, are you here? Let me know if you're here, Abhu, Abhu Um Yes, this is also one of the best three. This is a hack and slash, uh, a hack and slash uh, character action game, high concept, uh, very, very clear high concept, explains the platforms, explains the setting and story, um, explains uh the, the the player plays a character really quickly explain explain the genre explain so the nice thing is that he has decided to wear his hat so his hat that he has decided is game mechanics and he's done a really nice job of it uh he's he's put the uh he's put the controls over here and he says uh what is the main differentiator of this game um as well now, he even has a basic mock-up of the bar, which I really like. I really like mock-ups. As a game designer, you should be able to actually mock things up. Right? Um, and, okay. All right. So, if you're also, guys, by the way, if you're not in the live and your concept is shown, you don't win, even if you were first. Okay, so um, if if Abhudeya is not here, is there? Are you there, Abhudeya? Okay. Oh, there you are. Yep, yep. All right. So genre is uh, clearly explained. The mechanics are clearly explained. I really like this little bar. It's a it's a nice little touch. Very simple. Uh, the art side, the game is heavily stylized to show the dark and gritty nature of the world. Some really nice screenshots. This is really nice. One of the best parts is market research. You've done deep market research. You're talking about currently the game industry has seen a rise in popular character action games. This is gold. Like from a game designer's perspective, this is what people really like to see. He's done his market research of games which are similar. Um, really nice analysis. And also talking about the other features, ludonarrative consistency, multiple abilities and play sites. Uh, uh, side quests, cool factor, design prototype created by uh, Abhuda Chahan, student at Bhopal, at Bhopal University. So really, really nice job, Abhudaya. Thank you for that. That's one of the top three. Okay. And of course, now at this point, I have uh, one of the usual suspects. This is actually from... This is actually from the Gamer to Make a Course. Okay. <laughs> This is um, this is uh, oh sorry, this is how do you? 
I'm not. Oh yeah, slideshow. There you go. This is Mind Leaper by Ayush. Ash is actually from the Game of Omega course. Um, okay. So yeah. Um, there you go. And he has some really nice GIFs in here. Guys, I got to tell you, GIFs are awesome. If you have a GIF in your presentation, immediately people are going to look up and say, whoa, like this is such a dynamic presentation. This is such a, such a, a dynamic presentation. Also, by the way, guys, Ash, I'll tell you, has Ash is in class 12 and he has been making game for about five years now. So he has five years of experience and he hasn't graduated from school. Okay. He's one of the original members of, um, right. And this is, no, this is really cool. So, um, and very evocative. This is very, this is very fun and funky kind of presentation. It's very different from the others. It's very nice. It really grabs your attention. Um, and it's, it's brilliant stuff, like really nicely done. Art reference. Can I see it? Right. So this is really nice. He's actually done a GIF over here, um, uh, as to how the game actually works. Um, there you go. Yep. And that's it. So guys, these were the three top ones. Now, what I want you guys to do is I want you, uh, wh which is your favorite, right? Which is your favorite? Let me know which one you liked. So I'll mention there are three. <laughs> there are three. The three top ones are, are fires and steam. Uh, Fate of Fate of Arena, I think the name is Fate of Arena. Is that the name? Fate of the Arisen, right? Um, Mind Leaper, Fires and Steam, and Fate of Arisen. So let me know which one you like, and I will definitely have a little bit of weightage. Um, you can vote for which, whichever one you like, guys. What? His? What do you mean? Dude, you can vote for your own game <laughs> if you want. No worries. It's okay. But you get only one, right? All right. Okay. Wow. Uh, this, you like the second one, Fate of the Arisen, one, two, three, us, one, two, three, fire. And you got to choose one, man. You got to choose one only. Okay. All right. All right. All right, guys. So, and now I am going to tell you about, okay, Ash, you can't really get a scholarship because you're already in the course. So what you're going to do is you're going to get a special mentoring session with me. Okay. That's going to be your prize, right? So Ash, even though he was really nice, Ash is kind of like disqualified from scholarship because he is already in the course, right? So now I'm going to talk about the other two. And the winner of this challenge is Fate of the Arisen. This is, uh, this is the one that won, right? So congratulations, Abhyudaya. I think I just talked to you yesterday and this is really great stuff, guys. This is very, very impressive. Um, this has essentially pretty much all the components of a, uh, a profession. The, the one thing I would say is I would like, personally, I don't like the font you used, but it's really, really good. Okay. Overall, you've given a very, very, almost a professional quality design, design doc. You, this is basically a concept document, right? This is a concept document, which you have created. So congratulations. Uh, you win a 50% scholarship to the gamer to make a game design and production course. So your fees are struck by 50%.
Okay, so that was number one. And of course, the second one is going to be where is it gone? Yes. So second one is fires and steam. So once again, congratulations, Rohit. You get a 25% discount on the gamer to make a game design and production plat platform. So congratulations for both of you guys for coming first and com coming second. Okay. Now I have to say, guys, so many of you submitted. Okay. And I'm so happy. I'm so proud to see all of your submissions. I don't even know what to say. But I'm going to be that I'm going to actually do a few. I can't do all because it's going to take all night. I'm going to be doing a few deconstructions. I'm going to be given feedback to around three of these. So, guys, please come on to the after party if you want to see yours, uh, get some feedback. And also, guys, I'll be there to answer questions. Remember, the Gamer to Make a course is open for a limited time. Um, all the courses are open right now. If you have questions, come ask me there. And let's hang out. I'm going to grab, grab a cup of coffee, hang around on Discord, and I will see you around very soon. Okay? So, all right. So, thank you guys so much. Awesome day today. Good to see you guys. Thank you so much for coming. And I will see you on Discord. And that is the end of the Gamer to Make a Boot Camp. Guys, if you write down on this video, okay, this video, I'm going to let you know about whether the videos are going to be up or not. I want each one of you guys to go and put a comment on this video and talk about your experience uh, as to how it went. Because um, I want to do this. Give me feedback as to how the event went. Give me a comment on this video and I will see you around on Discord and the people who are going to be on the server. See you soon. Have a good night. Thank you for being here.